Thank you for your patronage. Thank you! What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mentally Gone Reacts. My name is Callie Lacerda. And I am Gabriella Lopes. And today we have a very special treat. As always, I, I always say that in the beginning of the thing, because to me, like, this is fun to do, because it's just like watching movies and dissecting it and just looking way too into stuff, which is what people <laughs> have, like, said. Some people like it, some people don't, but... But, but hence the name, Mentally Gone. Mentally Gone. You're here for what you're getting. Yes. <laughs> um, Lord of the Rings, I'm just going to give a quick... Uh, I'm I'm gonna try to preface this reaction by just giving you guys like a, a full disclosure of like my experience with the title of this movie, like with the movies rather. Um, growing up, and it, I kind of hate to say this because, but it is what it is because as kids, like the kids think this way. But growing up, things like Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, and anything similar to that was considered uh nerdy yeah so a lot of my friends at the time did not like this type of movie and so they would kind of scarn and kind of scoff at anybody who was a fan of these movies or who even watched it and so i had never had a reason i was never really like motivated and enticed to get into these types of movies and now here I am, 25 years old, and I'm finally getting into it. And I'm actually excited and I'm <laughs> happy and uh, because I know that it's a cult classic and it has to be a cult classic for a reason. And every movie that you guys have recommended so far to watch on this channel um, has been amazing. Every single experience has been very eye-opening, very enlightening for me at least. And I think that this one's going to be no different. I think it's going to be a similar thing. Um, yeah, I have absolutely no idea what Lord of the Rings is. Yeah at all like i i I was even making jokes before this and i was like i'm guessing it's about lords and it's about rings about the lords and the rings and the rings of the lords and the the rings belong to the lord yeah so the whole movie it's it's gonna be like a five minute movie it's like whose ring is this and then like some random lord is like oh it's fine you know and then it's over um no but i don't mean that in any bad way that's just me like i make stupid jokes but um (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I don't know anything about it, like, at all. Like, Harry Potter is something else, because I've never watched it, but I know it's about, like, wizards. Yeah. But this, I have absolutely no idea yeah. what it's about. Like, I don't, I can't even recall, like, any scenes other than, like, I don't know if that, like, My Precious thing is in yeah, this. Yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. The the, the ugly, bald, old yeah, man. Yeah, that's the only thing. Creature thing, yeah. and then he gets the ring, and then he's like, My Precious. That's the only well, thing yeah. I know. I I. I don't know anything. Like, I mm. can't even tell you what peop- the cast looks like in this. It's because also, like, that's, again, disseminated and ingrained in our culture, you know? Like, yeah. uh, I've seen gifts of that. I've seen that on Twitter. Like, my precious. Yeah, and then people exactly. do edits and stuff. And recently, also, in the gaming world, I heard through the grapevines, because I didn't personally, like... um Excuse me. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't personally get a chance to play it, but apparently they released the game that was based around this uh, bald character and it's considered to be one of the worst games ever made wow that sucks so you know um but but i but i'm really excited because what was i gonna say um the reason why i've never come around to like i i'm sure that I'm pretty sure that this is on the level the level of like Star Wars. Yeah. Star Wars and Harry Potter like they're right. all like on a equal playing field. Which uh, we've never seen a single Star right. Wars movie. But to my point into. is that like I've never gotten into these things because, you know, first of all, I'm I was born after the 90s. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like I don't this know This came if out that, 2001. Yeah, but see, I was one years old. Yeah, one year old watching. I was one years old. And so, like, later in life, there's just, like, during your life, there's so many other things that come out that you don't even think to go back and watch something from 2001, you know, that, 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 like, I, I didn't have people around me watching either, which I think plays a role too. It's like, obviously, I did watch, like, early 2000s and 90s and 80s movies, but that's just, like, whatever 
family watches and stuff and that's right. different but i don't know like i don't know anyone personally yeah who's yeah. watched lord of the rings that's what i meant by like um growing up and having groups of friends unless you had a group of friends who enjoyed these yeah, types of movies exactly. who were fans of like star wars and lord of the rings and harry potter then you would naturally be coerced and peer pressured into watching it but i never had anyone in my family like my family the bulk of them live in Brazil and they just watch telenovelas in Portuguese, which are similar to the Spanish ones. Soap operas. Soap operas. Yeah. Like that's all they watch news and soap operas. And so my whole life I was so preoccupied with school. I would get home. My mom's watching uh, soap operas, telenovelas and, and watching like Brazilian movies and stuff. And so like, that was my life because I grew up in Brazil. And so I net like no one, in my friend group, no one in my family liked this type of stuff. Yeah, but but <clears throat> what I was gonna say is that I'm someone who can get really into no, things. No, I can get so, into things too. Yeah. So by the time that we finish this whole, because it's a whole franchise, right? Like there's a couple S- movies. Three movies. Oh, only three? Yeah. Why do I think there was like five? I know that Star Wars has like Star Wars is like endless. Of yeah, like a a handful, but um, yeah. and a handful of shows too. And Harry Potter is like. I don't know, like 12 movies or some shit like that. 12 movies? I don't no know. No way. It's a lot of movies yeah. is my point. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, my point is that like by the end of this, I can see myself probably being a fan. Well, we'll see. I don't know what it's about. but To me, if a movie makes me emotional, which I, I bawled my eyes out in the previous video in um, Schindler's List, if a movie makes me emotional or makes me laugh or makes me really love it, feel this feeling of love then that's a hit for me Mm -hmm. so at the end i'm gonna obviously like judge it i'm gonna take notes we're both gonna take notes and then we're gonna discuss it at the end and give a review give our first thoughts or first impressions yeah Yeah, i'm excited let's go so let's just jump right into it um this is a long movie just like schindler's list uh we have been on a roll with three hour plus movies and that's why we've been taking a little bit longer. Um, I also want to quickly thank, before we start, uh, all of the patrons, everybody that's oh, been yes. supporting on Patreon. We are going to be starting very soon to do exclusive content for the patrons, uh, content that you won't see anytime soon on YouTube. Uh, that includes uh, Marvel movies, that includes uh, TV shows, anime. And I just want to thank every single one of you guys because you guys have been helping more than you can imagine. And nine, nine rings were gifted to the race of men who above all else desire power hmm. three seven nine but they were all of them deceived hmm. for another ring was made <gasps> in the secret. land of mordor mordor sauron forged in secret a master ring Uh-oh. to control all others and into this ring and his will to dominate all life oh no a last alliance of men and elves marched against the armies of mordor they fought for the freedom of Middle Earth. Oh my god. What are those things? The guy needs to brush his teeth, dude. But the power of the ring could not be undone. Oh, shoot. Wow. Imagine he single handedly takes them out. Oh no. Oh no. Shoot. Whoa. Look at them flying, dude. It's like flies. Oh my gosh, and people are still going to try to fight? <gasps> oh, oh, damn, he cut the finger off. Is he going to wear it? No way. And then it might corrupt him, right? Oh, that was the source of his... That was the source of his whole power. Sauron, the enemy of the free peoples of Middle-earth, was defeated. Sauron. Well, he didn't die. I think it's just like a blast wave or something. The ring of power has a will of its own. That's interesting. <gasps> Did what? he just disappear? Oh, shoot. To his death. Huh. Wow. It ensnared a new bearer. Oh no. The ring brought to Gollum unnatural long life. For 500 years it po- Oh, so he's just like super old. Like Bilbo. Oh, he's an author. Where to begin? Mm. 
So he's like uncorrupted soul, and that's why the ring, it yeah. wasn't like a suspected person. It is no bad thing to celebrate a simple life. I agree. Oh, look, it's his birthday. You think it's like a surprise party for him? Yeah, he's so busy. He arrives precisely when he means to. <laughs> <laughs> It's wonderful to see you, Gandalf. Gandalf. All right, so I'm writing all the names down because there's a lot of names so far. Frodo. The things are made to endure in the Shire, passing from one generation to the next. It's a nice little place. Look, their houses are like in the, you know? They're like the mounds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh oh. Is he looking for the ring? Damn, they have big ass feet. Look at their feet. You saw? Yeah. It's huge and it's furry. Look at that. That's why they walk barefoot. I'm glad you're back. So am I, dear boy. Aww. He's like a grandpa. Oh my gosh. I already, like, I'm already getting so attached to this character. <laughs> Her and, like, old grandpa figures. Like, you oh have so much. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so much emotional damage. Hey, <laughs> I'm no, kidding. I don't. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> The dragon. I feel thin, sort of stretched, like butter scraped over too much bread. Interesting. A very long holiday, and I don't expect I shall return. In fact, I mean not to. I think the ring is doing something, right? Yeah, maybe it's driving him crazy. <laughs> Renaissance. Yeah, like a renaissance fair. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Whoa. That's a good wingman. <gasps> oh, my God. See, that's a kind oh of my God. fireworks to see. I don't know why I took you in after your mother and father died, but it wasn't out of charity. You were the one baggins that showed real spirit. You'll be all right. I hope he doesn't leave him. Done. Inside of a tent? I knew it. I oh, that's not a good move. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, wow. Oh Look at that. Oh, my gosh. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's like a dragon. What happened to the, to the kids? Oh. I'm going now. I bid you all a very fond farewell. He's gonna put it on. Goodbye. Oh shoot! Gives you like in invisibility and teleportation or something. And I wonder how many um, powers it gives you. It was just a bit of fun. Oh, you're probably right, as usual. Hmm. <laughs> so he's like the guidance here. Hmm. Oh my, oh my gosh. God. <gasps> Is he Gollum? Like, like, does he turn? Mm. Does the ring symbolize power? Or rather, it gets attached to you. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. I wonder. Because they said that there were three different ones and then this one was made to kind of. No, they said that there were three, seven, and nine. And then one was made extra. Three, seven, and nine? Yeah, so oh. total of, what does that make? What is that, 20 total? I would be afraid to even touch that thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my god, jump scare. I was not expecting a jump scare. The ring is yours now. There are some things that I must see to. What things? Questions. Hmm. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. He's not supposed to leave him. Hmm. Oh no. But why would he give this object that he knows is corrupting his his uncle, you know? Like he saw it corrupt him. Yeah, but it can't go anywhere else. Yeah, and it has to be with someone that's pure of heart, I suppose, to keep it out of reach of the evil guys. 
But that's why he's saying to keep it a secret and out of sight. Yeah, don't let anybody see it. And even for him not to like put it on or anything, because that's why he put it in an envelope. A and sealed it. Mm-hmm. Your follows the account, Monsieur Law. High King of Gondor and the finding of the Ring of Power. Ring of Power. Hmm. <laughs> Uh-oh. Don't worry, Sam. Rosie knows an idiot when she sees one. Does she? <laughs> He's like, damn it, I'm an idiot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Imagine. What are you doing? Hold out her hand for her. No. Sixty years the ring lay quiet in the woman's kitten, prolonging his life, delaying. Mm. I looked everywhere for the creature Gollum. Oh. But the enemy found him first. Oh, shoot. I don't know how long they tortured him. Oh, no. But that would lead them here. Oh, shoot. You got a dip. What's that do? You must leave. And leave quickly. Oh, my gosh. What about you? I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> it's so small. You can learn all that there is to know about their ways in a month, and yet after a hundred years, they can still surprise you. He seems, like, so pure, right? Yeah. It's like, with, like, no malice, like, I haven't detected any malice yet in I his know. heart. Oh, He's, like... Literally, like, pure, like, embodiment of purity. It's like a father figure and a and a guide. Ganji, have you been eavesdropping? I have been dropping no eaves, sir, honest. Dropping no eaves. Oh no. That is, I heard a good deal about a ring and a dark lord and something about the end of the world, but please, Mr. Gandalf. <laughs> Basically, everything. <laughs> don't turn me in anything unnatural. unnatural. Oh no. Perhaps not. I've thought of a better use. He's gonna have to travel with Frodo now. It wants to be found. Interesting. <laughs> He could have given them a ride, <laughs> like a quick little ride, you know. There's no knowing where you might be swept off to. Hmm. That's a pretty powerful quote. Ooh, look at them! Ooh. They got a little barbecue going on in the woods. I'm hungry. They're gonna track the enemies that way. They're gonna be like, "Oh, somebody has a barbecue going on." Shut your eyes and imagine you're back in your own bed with a soft mattress and a lovely feather pillow. That almost worked on me. I was like, "Can <laughs> 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 you imagine that?" <laughs> it's not working, Mr. Frodo. How many of you guys like can fall asleep easily? And how many of you guys have a hard time? I have a hard <laughs> time falling asleep. <laughs> me, it's like just as long as once I get in, I fall asleep just so easily. It doesn't even depend on anything. It's just like lay down. <laughs> Just think about sleeping and then you just sleep. <laughs> it's actually really surprising, too. Like, you can fall asleep on command even. Yeah, I can. It's crazy. A and I envy that, too. But then also, she wakes up super easily. Yeah, I could fall asleep right here like this. Like, I could just do it. <laughs> Sitting up. Well, that is why you have come, is it not? So these are elves, I'm mm. assuming? No, these are wizards, right? They're both wizards. He said that it's his, like, um, council. It's his... um. Mentor. A Palantir is a dangerous tool, Saruman. Why should we fear to use it? It's like a crystal ball. Ah. <gasps> it's the second time he sees it, right? Yeah. That's the eye of Sauron that he's seeing, I think. We must join with him, Gunther. Uh oh. <sighs> we must join with Sauron. He no. has an evil look to him. Like, he has a good look to him. He has an evil look. When did Saruman the wise abandon reason for madness? Yeah! Ouch. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, you see? They're like bleeding. Yeah. Master versus pupil. No, 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 no. Oh no! Oh my god. Oh my god, that's such a tall tower is all I could think of. A shortcut. A shortcut to what? The mushrooms. 
Oh, mushrooms. Whoa, shrooms. Yeah, they like to get turned, right? <laughs> is what they said at the beginning, turning up? Yeah, they're like turning up. Turn down for what? Get off the road! Quick! I just love when the camera does that. Like when movies have that, you know, that shot where things get close. <sighs> yeah. Like that, it gives me so much anxiety and it's such, such a good shot. No, don't scream, don't oh, scream. Ah, I hate that. I hate that. Oh my god. Don't make it. <gasps> no, 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 no. Almost. Is that thing like blind? Like it doesn't have a. Yeah, I don't know. I think it might be the spirit of. Um, what's his name? Sauron? It doesn't have a face. Yeah, I think that it needs the ring in order to materialize, maybe. To, like, become whole again, you know? And he almost put it on. I know. Oh. And then Sam saved him. Good on Sam. That thing is terrifying. And I thought that there were multiple of them, right? Or was it always just one? Because I could have sworn when they started rolling up, it was, like, three or four of them. It might just be, like, part of the army of Modor. Yeah. Mordor? Mordor. Mordor, yeah. Huckleberry Ferry, follow me. So they have like a little... Oh my god. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh my god, dude. The jump scares are crazy. Oh no. Oh my god, my heart just dropped. Oh no! Run! Imagine he dies. No, he can't. Oh my gosh. Brandywine Bridge. 20 miles. Don't just shout your plan out loud. Like oh, what? look, look. There are multiple. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Very eerie. It came so out of nowhere. I was, like, just about oh. to acknowledge how nice it was that they have, like, a little team going on now. <laughs> yeah. And then this one monster. of, like, stay off almost died. <laughs> no. I remember elderly chap. Big gray beard, pointy hat. <laughs> Not seen him for six months. How long has it been since they started traveling? I don't think it's been that long. I just think that he meant that like Gandalf hasn't been into this establishment in a while. You you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Round here, he's known as Strider. Strider. I'm trying to write all these names down. So many names. Frodo has such like an innocence in his eyes. You know? I know. Yeah. Oh. Don't do it for... Oh, they hear it too? <gasps> oh, no. Oh, they're going to announce... Oh, they all feel it. Look. How do they feel it? Oh, no. no! Oh, and that guy's like... Oh, my gosh. No! Oh, my God. <gasps> no! Oh, because they sense when the ring is on. You draw far too much attention to yourself, Mr. Underhill. He might end up saving him. You have a stout heart upon it. But that will not save you. Mm -hmm. They brought a chair and candles. <laughs> oh, 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 oh my it killed gosh. a guy. It killed a guy. Oh no. And that guy was a pretty chill guy. He was pretty nice. They're not safe here. Are they still in the same uh, place? No. <gasps> oh my oh, gosh. Oh, oh. Mm. Ouch, ouch. No, ouch, no, no, ouch, no, 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 no. Wake up. <gasps> Yeah, what are they? I'm glad this guy is saving them. Where is he leading us? Rivendell, Master Gamji. He could hear them. Did you hear that? Rivendell. We're going to see the elves. Oh, okay. We're going to meet the elves finally. I wonder what those other people were. The people that were, you know, um, glowing. Yeah, those are the elves. 
Oh, they are. Yeah, that's what Sam said. That uh. they're leaving mid uh, mid mid Earth. Mm. Middle Earth. Middle Earth. Yeah. We have work to do. Oh, he's still alive. He's like on top of something. Oh my gosh, is he like deserted there? Mortal. This was the great watchtower of Amunsum. We should rest here tonight. Amunsum. Where have I heard that name, Amon? Hmm. Isn't that like ancient Egyptian? Or Sumerian or something? Amon? Amun. Oh look, there's a person over there, you see it? Stay here. You th you think they've ever used the sword? Maybe not because there was no war in there in Hobbit's town. Hobbit's Hobbit's town? Mm, I guess. Something like that. We saved some for you, Mr. Frodo. Oh, Put it out, bacon. Put it out. Ow, my foot. Oh my god. Oh no. Yeah, they're kind of stupid, dude. Like Frodo's the only wise one, it seems. No, oh no, Frodo. It's gonna go down. Wait, but how can you beat something that's not dead or alive? Oh my god, look at that. that that's scary, I bro. I can't even imagine how you can. I would definitely be peeing and shitting myself right now. Oh god. 100%. Back the devils. devils. Oh, I have a bad feeling. They want Frodo. They don't even care about the other ones. Ah, Frodo. He's going to do it. He's going to put it on. <laughs> they kind of remind me of the Grim Reaper. Yeah. You know? It's like literally death creeping up on you. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh wow. wow. You can see their face now. There we go. Take it off, take it off. I'm just happy this guy came along, you know? Yeah. Oh, if he burns them. You think that's like their weakness? Fire? Because the rings were forged in fire, so maybe the people who become controlled by it, they can be killed by fire in the same capacity, the same way. It's like mm. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, they're scared of fire. He needs Elvis medicine. Ah! We're six days from Rivendell. He'll never make it. Six and days. Ah! Crazy. And then nowadays you could just order an Uber. Just get wherever you gotta go. Yeah. Get an airplane. Before he people cried were out for Gandalf. Yeah, that's like his grandpa. I think he's just like his, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Paternal figure? No, like your mentor. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. His teacher. The person he looks up to. Oh, his role model. Yeah, that too. Oh, look, it's a moth. Which is very symbolic, right? Because butterflies are symbolic of spirituality and levity and the transmutation of the soul. And then moths are the counterpart of that but at the same time they're also signs of hope in darkness well people are scared of moths and they hate them and they're disgusted by moths oh look they gravitate towards light yeah which is interesting because they're beings of darkness and they still search for the light is that like a moth what is that thing? i don't know what that is but it reminded <laughs> me of a moth at least <laughs> you're like just playing a guessing game here <laughs> Oh, he's creating the army with these things. Yeah. Good looking fella oh right there, man. Oh my gosh. Hmm. Trying to find some medicine. Oh, oh. Who's that? Oh, it's an elf. Hmm. They're beings of light. It kind of reminded me of like angels, you know? It's like this is what I, what I imagine angels looking like. Yeah. Look at his eyes getting red. Come back to the light. Hmm. 
Fight hard. Don't look back. <laughs> 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 That's what he said to her. <laughs> Ride hard and don't look back. Pause. Pause. <laughs> so now Frodo's just in their hands, huh? I know, they're just passing Frodo on, you know? <laughs> it's like poor Well, kid. they have to save him, you know? Yeah. And she seems trustworthy, you know? Like, I'm going off of trustworthiness, off of how people look. She mm. seems like someone I trust, Strider too, and Gandalf. Everyone else is a no-no. <laughs> They're trying to, like, recruit him even, maybe. Yeah. How is she going to lose them? Oh, 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 oh. Ooh, ooh. She's, like, breaking their ankles, the horse ankles. She's, like, faking them out. Oh, in the water. They can't touch water. Interesting, huh? It's like they're allergic to the elements. They don't like fire, water. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's probably why they avoid it, maybe. Oh wow, look, it's horse form. Yeah. That's so cool. Look at that. Yeah. Ooh. But these things don't die. Because even the fire didn't kill them then, right? Or yeah, because they, they're not dead or alive. So, so I don't know. how do you get rid of them? Oh, that doesn't... I think as long as the rings are in existence. You're lucky to be here too. Few more hours and you would have been beyond our age. Did she sacrifice her life? She transferred her powers, it seemed. Or her protection or something like that. <laughs> Friendship mm. of Sodom is not lightly thrown aside. Only one who can bend it to his will. Ooh. He does not share power. Oh, is that a hawk? Oh, that's his uncle. It Hello, is. Frodo. Look how old he is without the ring. Aww. It's only been like a month. A hobbit's tale by Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> oh my gosh. He finished it. My own adventure turned out to be quite different. <laughs> Careful what you wish for. We did what Gandalf wanted, didn't we? We got the ring this far to Rivendell, and I thought, seeing as how you're on the mend, we'd be off soon. My phone. Hmm. Mm -mm. He's homesick. All of them are. His strength returns. Hmm. Wound will never fully heal. He will carry it the rest of his life. Hmm. Oh, shoot. Gandalf. The ring cannot stay here. Oh, no. <laughs> they just got there, it feels, and now they have to move again. Always on the move. I'm just guy. surprised because Bilbo had the ring for 60 years, they said, right? Yeah. Where the ring was forged, the one place it could be destroyed. Cast it into the fire! Oh, man. Destroy it! No. You see, no! It should have ended that day, but evil was allowed to endure. You couldn't just kill the human? He turned from that path a long time. Chosen exile. Who this guy? Hmm. He's a ranger, they said. A raider. Blade cut the ring. Sauron's. Hmm. <gasps> oh, he pricked himself. No more than a broken arrow. He's gonna break it even more. Put it back, dude. Come on. Uh. Hmm. That's no way to handle this thing. A heirloom, right? Like it's an artifact. It's it's a sacred religious artifact at this point. Oh no. He doesn't want it. Oh look. Oh they knew each other. Yeah, they knew each other. Remember? She was like, plus I'm a better rider than you. Bind. Binding. 
Mm. Immortal. Mm. I would rather share one lifetime with you. Oh, wow. Face all the ages of this world alone. Damn. Wow. Sacrifice immortality for love. That's actually quite beautiful. Oh. oh. Okay. Okay. When's the wedding? Hmm. <laughs> All of them feel called to it. Yeah, I don't trust this guy. In a dream. I saw the eastern sky grow dark. He's making it up. He sued you as pain is found. Mm, what's going on? A gift to the foes of Mordor. Why not use this ring? Hmm. The one ring answers to Sauron alone. It has no other master. And what would a ranger know of this matter? Ranger. Yeah. He is Aragorn, son of Arathor. Hmm. You owe him your allegiance. Aragorn. Aragorn or Aragorn? Aragorn. <laughs> Aragorn. <laughs> this is Isildur's heir. An heir to the throne of Gondor. How about that, Elvis? Gondor has no king. I don't trust this guy. Yeah, he seems very, um... Gondor needs no king. You have only one choice. The ring must be destroyed. Mm. That's what I thought from the beginning of the movie. Just just destroy it. Yeah, but they have to go back to what Mount Doom. For? Yeah. No, you can't destroy it that way. <laughs> Broke his axe. The ring was made in the fires of Mount Doom. Only there can it be unmade. And it's a perfect ring too, like the shape. Must be taken deep into Mordor and cast back into the fiery chasm from whence it came. Kind of want Oh it. my gosh, that's gonna be a trip to go on. Mm -hmm. There is evil there that does not sleep. Mm, that's a popular phrase. When Sauron takes back what he says, I will be dead before I see the ring in the hands of an elf. Well, so, much so, much uh, so much for. <laughs> So much for peaceful resolution. Yeah, so much for peace. Frodo's gonna take it. And because of the scar that he has, he seems to be like... Uh, Even more in, binded to Yeah, it. and envisioning the eye of... Sauron. Sauron. Oh, man. That must be so sad for him. He knows that that's the right choice and that that's the answer. He's just, you know, sad that he might die. I will help you bear this burden, Frodo Baggins. Oh, he's going with him? In my life or death, I can protect you. I will. Going to? No, he has a pretty good team behind him. Thank you, help my brother. Nice. And mine. Nice. Oh, are they all going or are they just giving their weapons? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagine you have to carry all those weapons. The small ass kids. What's going on? <laughs> He's always eavesdropping. You need people of intelligence on this sort of fashion <laughs> quest. Intelligence, debatable. Yeah. They are like the ones that get him into the most trouble. Yeah. And risk his life <laughs> and. <laughs> Nine companions, look. Nine. Uh, oh, man. <gasps> That's the, the name the of the movie. movie. <laughs> Fellowship of the Ring. I still don't trust that other human guy. I didn't even catch his name. As light as a feather and as hard as dragon scales. Let me see you put it on. Let me see you put it on. Whoa. Hold on there, uncle. No, don't. No. Don't do it. Don't do it. I don't think so. Nah. <gasps> oh, oh my, my god. gosh. Uh, that scared what the, the heck? Oh my god, that scared the crap out of me. Oh my god, you saw his face and his teeth? He like transformed into something. <laughs> yeah, I'm thanks. Sorry, you must carry this bird. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh like, my gosh. It's your problem now, is basically what he's saying. 
Wow, no kiss goodbye. She nothing. gave up her mor- her immortality. So, like, what if she dies before he gets back? Well, I don't know if she did it yet. Did she do it? It's a beautiful... Earth, Earth has so many beautiful places. And movies like this just make me want to travel. Like, I haven't traveled at all almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to especially more. to mountains. Yeah, to like open, like, yeah, exactly, mountains. Mountain peaks. Look at that. And then meanwhile, people dream of living in like New York City and stuff. Yeah, I'm not a city person. So I wonder if this elf is Im- like immortal. Oh my god. Oh, oh my oh. god, what the heck? Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, it seems like they're hurting each other. I know. I thought they killed him. Uh uh-uh. uh. Crabine from Dudland. Hide! What are those? Oh, because they said that. That Sauron takes the form of men and birds, birds. and animals, yeah. beasts. <clears throat> what? Oh my gosh. It's like Mount Everest. <laughs> They're taking the long way. Yeah, and they don't feel cold. <gasps> oh no. Oh. Sh- oh. Well, who's going to pick it up? Oh no. Oh God, please. Not this guy. <clears throat> Someone take it away from him. <sighs> yes, give it. Don't play any. Hmm. Why would they bring someone that they don't even trust? I know. It's interesting. I guess, like, if you were to have a case where you have to sacrifice one person, then you sacrifice the one that people trust the least. You try to lead them over to Atlas, and if that fails, well, you go. He knows? You risk more danger. Look at that. <laughs> oh no. He said red horn? <gasps> no. Oh my god, on top of them. Oh no. Oh, oh. Oh, I saw one fall. No, you didn't. Did I? Know? Oh, don't play like that. I really hope not. Unless it's the guy that I don't trust. <laughs> See? <laughs> That's when it comes in handy to have one that you for don't really me, like. For me, for me. And I'm for them, too. It's like, all right, oh, well. They would never do that because they have good heart. <laughs> what are you trying to say about me? Let us go on on it. Let us go hmm. through the mines of Moria. That's what he had proposed initially. He should have listened. You know what they awoke in the darkness of Khazad. Oh, that's how he sees it. It's because of his crystal ball, remember? So yeah. he sees everything. <clears throat> Everybody puts all the weight on him, which I find unfair. <laughs> I know. Like, he's never done this in his life. This is like when we try to figure out what to eat. We will go through the mines. Oh, shoot. So be it. <laughs> he, he didn't want to. And I'm like, what do you want to eat? And then she never knows, and then I never know, and then it's a back and forth. Laws of Durin, Lord of Moria. Suppose that? Oh, it's quite simple. If you want a friend, you speak the password, and the doors will open. What's the password? <laughs> the dwarf doesn't know the password? What are you going to do then? Knock your head against these doors, <laughs> Peregrine Took! <laughs> 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 uh, I know, right? Like when people ask stupid questions. Mm. Isn't that f- annoying? <laughs> hey, uh, not me. <gasps> I feel like Frodo probably knows it subconsciously. Maybe the ring tells him. Exactly. You know, like it whispers to him or something. But then why would the ring want them to go there? Oh, there's movement. <laughs> they disturbed the water. Oh, look, just like you said. Mm-hmm. 
Smart cookie. Speak friend. And then Oh, you just say friend? No. Oh, that was so easy. <laughs> How did you know? What do you mean? He read it out. Speak friend and yeah. answer. Yeah. <laughs> this is no mine. It's a tomb. <gasps> yeah, I was seeing the corpses. <laughs> oh, these are all dead dwarves? You should never have come here. Now get out. Oh, are th are those goblins in the water? What is that thing? It's like an anaconda. Uh, I thought that, oh, that was a oh. tentacle. Yeah, it's like a squid. Oh my! Oh my God! What is that? Oh, do you know what that could be referencing? Like a kraken? Kra yeah, exactly. Is it? Kraken, yeah. Kraken monster thing? The Leviathan or something. Mm. Oh my god, it's a hideous beast. Hideous. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're gonna be stuck in there. And the guy warned them, like, don't, don't disturb the waters. You have no choice but oh. forward. Which is a powerful message, like, you can't go back. Or jewels. And mithril. Mithril? What's mithril? Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, one wrong step and you're gone. <laughs> Can't always think. <laughs> oh! What's that? Is that, um, what's his name? Gollum? Oh, gosh. Oh, my God. Look at his eyes. Smeagol. Oh. I thought that was his kind of species. Before this is over. That's an ugly thing, dude. Yeah, it smell so foul. <laughs> If he dies, you die, know, always follow your nose. Interesting. Always follow your nose. Great realm, dwarf city of Dwarven. Where are all the dwarfs? <laughs> wow, that's a big book. You cannot get out. Shadow moves. Mm, so they're not alone. They're coming. Oh, great. Don't touch stuff. Oh, dude. This guy, it's the second time, right? Look. Second? They do this all the time. Literally, what part of don't disturb the peace do you not understand, dude? Oh, Come on. First with the kraken in the water. Now the, the shadow monster. <laughs> This is a pretty scary movie. I wasn't expecting it to have this um, horror twist on it. It's eerie. Oh, his his sword is glowing blue. Oh yeah. Orcs. These are the orcs. So the sea monster was not an orc. Okay. Oh oh oh. Yeah, with the same arrows that they killed the dwarfs. What do orcs look like? That's what I want to know. They have a cave troll. And trolls are huge from the, from the thing we saw. Oh, shoot. They're screeching, too. Yeah, just like those other beasts. Those dark... Oh, oh okay. those are orcs. Yeah, th those are the ones that Saruman... Yeah, is producing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that Saruman is producing a a mix between orcs and goblins, I believe. I don't remember what they said. Oh, these are terrifying. And they have a cave troll, he said. Look. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's a big boy. Woo. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh. Oh, 
Oh gosh, I don't even know how they survived some of these hits. I know, right? Oh, he saved his life. Look, man helping man. Yeah. What a surprise. Humans helping each other? Oh, he's Ooh. just beating up his own army for us. Who do you think is the strongest so far from the group? Um, from the fellowship? I, I can't even think. Ooh. Oh, this guy's doing a good job. I was going to say that my favorite so far is the is the elf. The archer? Yeah, in terms of fighting... So far, it's the... Uh, yeah, it's the elf. And I've got to say that, that Gandalf's powers are kind of underwhelming because I would assume that he was like a powerful wizard, you know? Gandalf the Grey, like he could take down this troll, no? Mm. Just, just using his staff and using his magic? Yeah, I'm not... I don't know. Well, we don't really know what his powers consist of, really. Yeah, but then during his fight with Sonamon or, or whatever it was, like, they were matched equally. So, like, that's my point, is I haven't seen him do much. Oh, he's not moving. He's unresponsive. Where's Gandalf, dude? I'm telling you. <gasps> oh. oh. Damn. Is he dead? That was a pretty bad um, accident, maybe. <laughs> oh no. Still alive. He's alive. How? <laughs> I know, right? I'm not hurt. What? What saved you? Huh. That's some superpowers we don't know about. Oh. Oh, shoot. Wow. It's hard as dragon skin. Mm. Yeah, yeah, they got to run because there's probably like an endless supply of orcs, you know. And I wonder where that light is coming from. Yeah. They should follow the light. Yeah, I can see why the dwarves lost. Oh, oh my god. What? Dude. It's like insects. They have some sharp weapons too. Man, they're scary. Now what? They can't beat all of them. You think they turn themselves in? Maybe. They need a miracle. Oh look. Isn't that supposed to resemble the eye? The eye of Sauron? What is this? You definitely. <laughs> I know, right? I think it's always something new. Definitely devilry. Balrog. Balrog. What? Balrog. Oh, there's light in there. Oh, never mind. Light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> yeah, not the one they wanted. Why is he so weak? It's because of the battle, maybe. Huh. Ooh. The soundtrack is amazing too. Just like oh, oh, oh. it just creates this, you know, this uh, this eerie vibe. And I'm literally on the edge of my seat. Like I can't sit back and relax. Like I have to be, you know, engaged. Oh, where did that come from? Oh my gosh! Oh, these orcs, dude, just mind your own business. Come on, there's a freaking demon coming. Look at that headshot. Oh my Ooh. god, this guy's been practicing in COD. See, I, I'm telling you, the the elf is my favorite uh, warrior character, for sure. Yeah, because archery, for, like, it's great for longer distances, too. Yeah, and the accuracy. He just, just one shot. Oh no. Not the beard. <laughs> He's like, don't rip it off. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather die than rip my beard off. Oh, shit. That's a big jump. But he can make it, kind of, right? What? Because it's kind of, like, slanted. So he could just run and, you know? It's not, like, straight across. I don't think they even have time to run. I don't think they have time to think. Oh, my gosh. They have to do it now. 
Yeah, time's a ticking, guys. Come on. He could, like, launch him, maybe. You know? He might. Oh, I like, don't want to see anyone die. Like, like, do some torque action. Or he could wait for it to tilt forward. Yeah, see? Nice. Smart, smart. I would have done the same thing. Yep. All right, perfect. Nice. <laughs> that was more seamless. <laughs> this movie is great at, like, showing you a high-intensity... Um, yeah. Yeah. A uh, like, high-stakes moment, Yeah, right? like, you think you think that everything is lost, and then it's yeah. like, oh, never mind. And uh, then oh. and then when you think everything's at peace, it's like, ugh, jump scare, you know? I know. Oh, my God, look at that. What Ooh. the heck? Its mouth is like a portal into hell. I know. Yeah, he's like, uh-uh, not today. <laughs> he's like, oh my gosh, heck nah, look at dude. That thing. It's literally a demon. That's what I'm talking about. Like, see, he's powerful as shit. I was like hoping to see it. Because he's been holding back on us, dude. Look at that. It's like a whip of fire. No. <gasps> oh, I thought he was. Oh. Oh. <gasps> no. Oh, oh. Oh, no. Someone help him, dude. You guys could go and run and help him. <gasps> you fools. No! They couldn't help him? Oh, man. What? Damn, that, that was the ultimate sacrifice. That's crazy. And he saved them from the orcs, too, because he, you know, broke the bridge. Wow, what what a sacrifice. The ultimate good in order to destroy the ultimate evil. Yin and yang. Or yin versus yang. <sighs> That's so sad. Uh... Now they're eight. Yeah, that sucks, dude. Not Gandalf. I, uh, just like, just like I said, like take one of the, like not not one of the the hobbits, but take the Earth guy, the man, you know. That's really sad, cause you know. So where are they heading again? Because I have a really bad memory. They're heading to the Mount Doom, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, there is like a lot of um, names of places and names of things and names of people in this. I know. The great sorcerers. Elfwitch. Oh, female voice. Don't, don't follow the voice. The eyes of a hawk and the ears of a fox. <laughs> <laughs> not when you're talking. Famous last words. <laughs> no, none of them saw it coming either. Look, n not even that guy. Ah, uh, Aragorn and Duna die. Stand here. Aragorn and Duna die. Aragorn and Duna die. Yes, people. <laughs> exactly. Since the dark days. Hmm. And you know what this wolf says to that? Spit upon your grave. Whoa. Bring great evil with you. <laughs> you can go no further. And who is responsible for making that decision? Mm. We need your protection. The road is very dangerous. I wish we make. Uh, please understand. We need. It's going back so fast. Oh, 
So this is like the tree of life. It's like Yidrasil, you know? Yeah. It's where the most powerful elves, I'm assuming, live. Look at that. It's like a tree house. These are huge trees, too. These are like sequoias. What now becomes of this fellowship without Gandalf? What? No, no, he. You mm -hmm. was welcome, Frodo of the Shire. What do I see in the eye? Oh my God! Like I don't know what to she trust. She just communicated with him, like through. Yeah. Telepathy. And it seems like she can't be trusted either. <sighs> and he asked Gandalf, "Who can I trust?" Yeah, and he said, "No one." But yourself, right? He said, "Trust yourself." Mm-hmm. This guy might have, like, a redemption arc, right? Because we've been seeing his human side. This lady's scary. She kind of freaks me out. She's the lady of light. Terrible powers. According to the dwarf. He's going to talk to her. Or she's going to talk to him. Yeah, I really like the effects that the director chose for this with the lighting, especially the lighting. It makes a lot of difference. Yeah. You know, it adds to this ethereal feel that's like a that's like a dream. Look at the hair. Will you look into the mirror? Hmm. What will I see? Even the wisest cannot tell in a mirror. That's actually pretty profound, the mirror. And some things that have not yet come to pass. Do you trust her? I don't know. I really don't know. So they didn't have mirrors back then yet? This is like a um, narcissist looking at his own reflection. Those are his friends. <laughs> oh no. Is that... Is that what's happening right now? In the Shire. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, that's probably what will happen if he fails. Hmm. What is this lady trying to do? It is what will come to pass. If you should fail. Oh, See. yeah. I do not deny that my heart has greatly desired thee. Oh, no. And she's powerful, too, just like Gandalf. Gandalf was wise. Mm-hmm. And that he knew that he couldn't control it. No one can. You would have a queen. Not dark, but beautiful and terrible as the horn. Tactress is the sea. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. That's a scary lady, dude, I'm telling you. To bear a ring of power is to be alone. Hmm. Oh. Ring of Adam. This house was appointed to you. You can be yours. Even if it means to pass it and change the course of the future. And I think Mahatma Gandhi said the same thing. He said that um that one man can change the world. They were elves once. Oh shoot. This thing is terrifying. Whom do you serve? Saruma. Oh my gosh. That's a terrifying army, dude. I would definitely call in sick if I was um <laughs> if I had to fight in this war. You're being tracked. 
chance of outrunning the enemy before the fire. A lot of um, complex names, you know, Rauros, and there's a bunch of like a very complex names. Mm. Upset. Would a dwarf ask the elf? On the beauty of the veteran, one must die. She will walk there for gold jewels beneath the elf. <laughs> Look at this guy, this charmer, this player guy. Look at him <laughs> trying to. <laughs> she shot his shot, dude. Got I respect all that. I respect that. Oh. What was it? I give you the light, Ereni. Hmm. The light. beloved star. A star. Wow, dude. Everybody else gets like material things. He gets a star. In the light for you. In dark places. Hmm. When all other lights go out. Pretty beautiful. The spe like her speak like her the stuff she says is very beautiful, and her voice is really nice. Ask her for one hair from her golden head. Hmm. <laughs> he's gonna go clone her. Yeah, he's gonna clone her for sure. <laughs> I'm kidding. He's gonna like smell it at night. He's gonna. Ah. <sighs> <laughs> Oh, they're back. Are those the orcs or are those the nine uh, evil guys? The... Orcs. Oh, I forgot yeah. their name. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's the... Can they swim? <laughs> <laughs> that's the question. I don't... I wouldn't put it past them. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh my gosh. Imagine that thing looking into your eyes. Yeah, or hunting you. Oh look, the birds again. And oh. now they're in the water. And who knows what's lurking in the water, right? Because if we saw the kraken, and I don't think they killed the kraken. Oh, oh, Gollum. He's a pretty good stalker. Smeagol. What you are. I will not lead a ring within a hundred leagues. Oh, uh, so it's like to protect humans, I suppose. Because mm. he doesn't want to lead the ring into his city, you know, put more lives at risk. No, he's saying he wouldn't lead the r ring within his city. Yeah, like, I think it's more so like distrust. Yeah, because of just his past. Mm. Damn, look at that. His father. That's so beautiful. Obviously, it's fake. It's like CGI, probably, but. I suggest you take some rest and recover your strength, Master Dwarf. Wait, come on, my. <laughs> they have, like, short temper. It's funny. <laughs> it's funny because they're all diff like, different types of people. Species, yeah. Yeah. Pay no heed to that, you hobbit. Where's Frodo? Uh oh. Someone has to keep an eye on Frodo. It's madness. There is no other way. Cause only the strength to defend my people. Then you die. No, oh, the the elf warned him about this. Saved by a hundred shots. Couldn't be mine. It should be mine. Give it to me. Oh shoot. Someone's gonna save him. <gasps> oh, he put it on again. Oh, no! And oh shoot, I didn't even think of that. Every time he does that, he's entering the shadow world. Right. Yeah, you're right. It's like astral projection. It's like going somewhere without going there. Mm. Where is the ring? Stay away! Murder. What? It's taken him? Look after the others. Especially Sam. He will not understand. Everyone's compromised. Mm-hmm. Everyone's, uh... Oh. He's gonna face all these? Oh, no. Oh, 
Oh, keep running. I feel like he's always falling and tumbling. I know. <laughs> he has like a low center of, bal of gravity, it's too. It's those big feet. <laughs> I know. Hairy, big feet. I do a question. Come on. I going to have to put the ring on. No. Oh, Pippin. No, no, no. Oh, no. Sh damn it. Oh, Pippin. Come on, dude. Hey, dude. Over here. Hey. Over what? Here. Hey. Why would they do this? To lure them away. I know, photo. but... Go, go. Gonna sacrifice dying. Oh, this guy might help them. I still don't trust this guy, though. <laughs> no, he, he caught himself. He knew that he was in the wrong. Yeah, he was trying to control himself, I it, suppose. It's just the power of the ring, you know? Yeah. Draws people in. It brings out the worst in people. Yeah. The Horn of Gondor. Boromir. I love the names though. Gandalf, Boromir, Frodo. Yeah. Uh, what's the name of the big bad guy again? Um. Sauron. Sauron? The or Eye Saruman? Of Sar no, that's the other dude. Oh, yeah. Saruman, Saruman. is the wizard. <laughs> oh, sh I don't think I've seen blood. Like, I saw blood on Gandalf's face. Yeah, but they don't... No, they don't show any. Yeah, is this like a PG-13 movie? Maybe, right? Yeah. Because it's so popular, too. Like, it's, it's worldwide. <laughs> It's not a gory movie by any means. This is the big bad boss right there. It's the final boss. It's Saruman's uh, Frankenstein. No, it's Saruman's monster. Like like Frankenstein's monster. Oh. Oh no. I'm not sure. Look, he's still fighting. Another one. Oh shoot. Oh my gosh, right in the same spot. Where's the archer guy? Like why doesn't he, you know, shoot down the big the big boss? Wow. Still going. See, that's supposed to represent I think the human spirit. You know? Yeah. It's like it's hard to break down the human. The human spirit, the human being. It's very hard. Look at that, three times. Three strikes and you're out. Mm, after th after three strikes, they decide to... <laughs> they're like, the first one, eh, I'm still going to watch. But he was doing it to protect them, because look, yeah. like, they're gone. Oh, no. That's why he stepped in. Oh, that's right. I thought that the, the archer was there with the other guy, with... Ar yeah, Argon or Ar the archers with Argon, and mm. then these. And then he blew the horn to call them, and then they're st still getting to him, but it's too late. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, yeah, like I can't help but feel pity for him. I really can't. Oh God. Because he did what he could. He's only human after all. Oh. <gasps> No way. Oh, still In the hope. last second. Yeah, there's still hope then. Yeah, I don't think he's dead. Oh, oh my god. Oh, oh I thought that that just decapitated him, dude. Oh, I think there was shoot. like a gap. Yeah, yeah. I just thought that there wasn't. I was like, damn, that's it. With a shield. Oh my gosh. I would not want to face this thing. Mm -mm. <laughs> Look at it, weirdo, dude. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Oh my gosh. Oh my god, it's like, come <gasps> on. You think this will hurt me? Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, that definitely did. They took the little ones. If he pulls out the arrows. Yeah. I swear to you, I will not let the White City fall. Hmm. This is the first time he said our people. Mm -hmm. I wonder what it's like to stare into someone like during their last seconds. To stare deep into their eyes and just like 
do you see anything leave it? Like, does anything happen? You know? <sighs> yeah. It's like a twinkle. It disappears forever. <laughs> it's interesting. Death is such a mystery. It's the greatest mystery of all time. Look, uh, he's the only one going after him. I know. I'm just worried about the other two. Like, they got took. They got taken. <laughs> Get it? They got took. Yeah. I wish the ring had never come to me. Look at his eyes. Oh, imagine he just, like, throws it. Oh, that would be so stupid. Hmm. His spirit is speaking. Very nice. I don't know what this actor's name is, but he has beautiful eyes. Yeah. Look at those eyes. Damn. An old woman with you. No, swim. Come on, Frodo. You got to row back. What if he can't swim either? I... Oh no. He could extend the um thing for him to grab on. Hmm. I have a suspicion there. Well, it was so deep, right? <laughs> and then all he did was just do this in the water. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to laugh, but that's exactly what I thought. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that the whole time. Like, he, like it's such a deep ocean, and then I was expecting him to like extend the paddle. You know? Oh, uh, it's about the it's about the meaning of it. Yeah, like don't like like we can't focus on the <laughs> on the specifics. <laughs> but it is a little distracting though, because that was a pretty deep ocean. Come on now. <laughs> oh, this is so sweet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's funny though. Oh my gosh. Mount what? Mount Doom? Mount Doom. Oh, the waterfall. <gasps> Damn. Oh, look. They just let his body go. Hmm. Wash away. Is that more of the things? Oh no, that's them. The fellowship has faded. Yes, yeah, so, like I don't get it. Like, why let Frodo go alone? They could still catch up to them and help them and join them. Mm. <coughs> what if we hold true to each other? We will not abandon Mary and Pippin to torment. Oh, yeah, they're going to go save them. You travel like that handsome walk. Aww. At least they're going to try to save them. Because I didn't Pippins. even think of that. Like, they're go they went, like, two opposite ways, you know? Yeah, yeah, true. So if they follow Frodo, they're they're sacrificing two innocent lives. Yeah. Strider. I don't suppose we'll ever see them again. Who may have Mr. Frodo? Mr. Frodo. Aww. Sam and Mr. Frodo. Stop. You guys are friends. I'm glad you're with me. Oh, I thought he was going to say, you don't have to call me Mr. <laughs> Frodo anymore. <laughs> you could just call me Frodo. <laughs> That's what I would have Aww. expected from the beginning of the movie. <laughs> like, Mr. Frodo, I, I like I was questioning that, it, but it might be like a sign of respect. Yeah. Because, like, maybe, you know, Boggins, which is his last name, is a superior family. Yeah. You know, like, it could be like a hierarchy thing. Or it could just be, like, affectionate. Like, it's just... Wait, know. does the movie end like this? We're not going to see him put it in the fire? Wait, it's ending? Yeah. 
What? Oh, so that's why there's two two more movies you said, right? Oh, I thought that it was going to be the completion of the journey oh, here. Oh, me too. I was like, what? I was like, wait, why does it feel like it's ending? Because everything was so, so on a high note. Like, everything was kind of on I a know. high note. I know. Everything was building up and the tension was building up. And I was like, what? That's crazy. Oh, well, that makes you want to watch it, right? It's like, yeah. what happens to the... So we have to check out the next one soon. What happens to the ring? Just give me one sec. Hold on. Pretty long movie. Yeah. I was not expecting it to like be like that. Like I didn't know that it was an extension. It's kind of like one big movie that was just chopped into maybe three parts, two parts. I don't know. But um, what are your thoughts? Um. Well. Okay. I really enjoyed it, but I feel like I'll maybe enjoy it more once I have like the whole completion you know yeah it's it's hard to judge this movie alone because of the fact that it drops off at like a halfway point literally yeah yeah no but from from what what we did watch Mm -hmm. um you know i I really did like this idea of uh just like different bands of people kind of coming together which were you know the the dwarves the hobbits Mm. the the rangers slash men the elves kind of working together for the greater good against these uh, yeah the wizards again well not the wizards the wizards only gandalf yeah gandalf the um but yeah like that that to me was very like wholesome it was very you know Mm -hmm. um like I enjoyed watching that kind of unravel. Dynamic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what are your thor- thoughts, though? What are your thorts? Thorts. <laughs> thorts. What are your thorns <laughs> in your flower? <laughs> thor- 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 a thorn. And thor- and by the way, guys, like we're recording this at midnight. Yeah, it's currently midnight right now. <laughs> and you guys don't wait. Is it midnight? Yeah, it's eleven fifty p.m. right now. Um and. Just to let you guys know, like we record these and it's usually like a five hour process for us. And that's why she's yawning. And that's why I kind of yawn throughout the movie. And it's not because the movie's boring or anything. No, but it's because it's just like, it's just a long day. And yeah. And, and we do it like towards the end of the day. Yeah. I did an intense leg workout earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we have gym. We have a dog that we walk and we have like a bunch of other stuff on our yeah. plate. But, but. Do you want to go? Or no, me? go. Me? All right. I'm um, just having it open. All right. So um, I'm just going to go through my notes. My notes are not are not as extensive as they usually are. Just no, because, because I was kind of like focusing more on the movie. Yeah. I was going to say that. I feel like the like a, a movie like this, you can't really not, you know, pay attention to. Like you kind of yeah. have to keep up. And that's what I meant by like all of the names and stuff. It's like you have to keep up with the names and you have to keep up with you know what's going on. Like if you turn away for a second yeah. for a second too long, then you might miss something. But um but I still did get notes. But the thing with this movie too is that I feel like again, it's like there will be more like added to it once you watch all of it i feel like yeah for sure and i think another movie like this too it's it's so simple in its execution yeah where the simplicity of the execution kind of invites the viewer to dive in as deep as they want and that is saying that for example for me this is my take and my opinion i think that we are all frodo Mm. and that the audience everybody watching is frodo and i think that this movie did a very good job at basically showcasing the typical kind of archetypical um hero's journey you know it's the hero that starts in a very calm home like hometown and then the hero leaves his or her hometown and ventures into the depth of hell voluntarily in order to save the world And if you look at it from even like a Carl Jungian um, perspective, uh, if you get any like famous psychiatrist or psychologist or or philosopher even, I think that that's the path towards virtue, you know? And what that represents, like obviously a lot of it is a metaphor, um, you know, with the creatures and the monsters and the scenarios and the world building. But everybody can apply this to their everyday life, you know? It's just the idea of, 
being brave, being courageous, uh, not having any choice. Like when that cave closed in after the Kraken monster, the, the water monster closed its entrance and they were about to leave and, and like back away. But then Gandalf said that we have no other choice now but to venture into the darkness. And I feel like that's just life. Uh, um, I feel like that's what this movie represents too. And then in my opinion too, if you're going to view everything as a metaphor, which is just my take right now, if Frodo is all of us, Frodo represents the human consciousness and all of the other characters are maybe just extensions of that consciousness. They're just like voices in his head. It's like the elves represent maybe spirit guides or maybe to the Native American cultures, like ancient cultures, Egyptian cultures. It's like there's a lot of um, mythology, spiritualism, like spirituality kind of just meshed in there all throughout. And then the warrior, you know, like all like we all have like a warrior within us. We all have a king within us. We all have a dwarf within us. We all have an elf, a, a spirit, a being of light within us. And we all have darkness. We all have, uh, what's his name again? Sauron. We all have Saruman within us. And so I think that it's just that. It's a hero's journey. And and I think that that's what Frodo is doing right now. Like it ended beautifully with Frodo and Sam venturing alone. Because also there's a beautiful thing that happens, right? Like when you're going through depression or or you're going through any like dark tribulations and and just like just messed up parts of your life and everything's just going to hell and and it seems like the walls are breaking are, are just closing in on you you have to deal with that alone it's like there's no one no one's going to come to save you like you won't have any sam you won't have any aragorn is it aragorn mm -hmm. um horrible name aragorn because it's spelled Aragorn, but they say Aragon. So you don't have any Aragon, you don't have Gandalf, and you don't have anyone to save you but yourself. And that's why Gandalf also gave the suggestion to Frodo to trust yourself. It's like, who do I trust in this world? Like, like who can I trust, Gandalf? First, trust yourself. It's like, know yourself. Know thyself. That's what the Greeks believed in. That's what Socrates believed in. That's what Plato believed in. Like, know thyself. That is the prerequisite to survive in this world. And I was going to say that it's like, that's what I really enjoyed about the movie is that you can kind of relate to the essence and the message of it. And so um, just like you were saying, like Frodo kind of has to go on this, this like journey that mm -hmm. he didn't really choose for himself even like it was yeah. just fate. But that, that again is the way that life works. It's like the mm -hmm. cards that you are dealt and what's interesting is that he questions it, which is also a very realistic thing. So throughout, he questions, like, um, I wish I had nothing to do with this. Like I, mm -hmm. So even with the fate of humanity in his hands, he still, you know, wants to selfishly just give it, like, yeah. give it up to the world and just, you know let it kind of handle itself and he like it brings him to tears even it's like he knows that he's bearing all of this responsibility and again that could be applied to us where it's like we might have a lot of struggles or circumstances or whatever we're going through and then there are just times like for example that people just want to end it all or people want to just give up entirely whatever that is whatever you can apply it to and then you kind of reconvince yourself it's like you have to reassure yourself that it's worth the effort and the journey and then you continue it's really well said but yeah that's what i really enjoyed about it and then and then i really like that thing it's like um even though gandalf said don't trust like trust yourself he didn't necessarily say don't trust anyone because mm -hmm. he didn't say those words um and so i think that him having a friend like Samwise is his name, which I think is also important. It's like Wise, mm -hmm. Samwise. Um, but him having a friend like that uh, just shows that it's like he could do it alone, but, but just having like a support system, even if he's like kind of useless, yeah. even if he's not like, a, he's not the warrior of the group, the archer, he's not the, the dwarf who can sling heavy weapons or whatever. He's not any of those things, but he is uh, just like he, an embodiment of just, you know, not only something familiar to him because it's a piece of home, mm -hmm. but also 
like the embodiment of just a pure love. essence of friendship, right, and love. Yeah, yeah. To me, it's um, it's the embodiment of unconditional love. And I think also it might even touch on the idea of soulmates because a lot of people believe that soulmates, like we think soulmates and we think romantic soulmates, but there are multiple soulmates, I think. I think people throughout their lives, they encounter multiple soulmates. And so it could be, you know, a version of a soulmate for you. Uh, like for me, for example, I could speak on myself, like my soulmate that's non-romantic, you know, aside from you, obviously, my non-romantic soulmate is my dog, Shadow. And so, like, me and him are inseparable. Like, his name is Shadow, and he's li literally my shadow. It's like <laughs> everywhere I go, he's always with me. And so I think that that's what Sam is. Like, Sam serves as Frodo's shadow. And just speaking on Shadow real quick, another uh, reference to Carl Jung, he believed in something called the Shadow, which is interesting because the first demon was called Shadow, uh, Shadow and Flame or something. And you see glimpses of the consequences of ignoring one's own shadow. And one's shadow can be just essentially the monster that everybody has within themselves, the capacity for evil. And you see that divine elf, excuse me, uh, you see that, that divine elf lady, uh, she turned into like the polar opposite of what she presented herself, which is a being of light and hope and beauty. And then she just embodied this horrific queen of evil. But I think that that is her shadow self manifesting. And so I think if you're not able to integrate your shadow self into your personality in a way where you're able to achieve a balance, then you are going to always be susceptible to the um, instability in terms of like one thing can happen and you snap and then you just go full shadow and you just turn evil, which is what happened to Saruman, which um, to Gandalf's surprise, who was an old friend of his, a friend of life, a friend of light, a friend of just beauty and just a good relationship. He just turned when th when the scales kind of flipped, you know, and and something that I was going to say to that, too, is that you can say that. If you, if you, um, you know, kind of get too involved in your shadow self or in the shadows of your being, mm -hmm. then it will consume you, which we saw too. So if he spent too much time in the shadow world, right. essentially it would consume him. Yeah. Like he would be left there to be one of those people who are neither dead or alive. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's also a metaphor for life. It's like if you stay too um to like into uh like darkness essentially yeah. whatever darkness that is for you then then you might get lost in it and you might just be nothing you yeah. might not be dead or alive you're just existing which yeah, i think is what be, it means it's like a metaphor you're gonna be an empty shell of yourself. right exactly yeah, yeah a and um also the obvious um commentary i suppose is the ring itself which to me represents power and power corrupts m every man you know like every man that comes into power gets corrupted by it for the most part especially actually no like there's a thing that i wrote down too um every man who seeks power and obtains power usually gets corrupted by it and it's always, usually throughout history, like if you look at Marcus Aurelius, if you look at other great leaders who led nobly, they were people who did not want to be king, who did not want to be emperors, who did not want the crown. So it's always the case where the, the ruler who does not want or does not lust for power and the crown, and when they obtain that responsibility, they usually do well by the people and they do well by the crown and and i think that that's what it was alluding to with um aragorn because he said that he didn't want to do it so again it's this like running away from responsibility it's not wanting to face your destiny face what needs to be done it's like you have to be king because you're the only heir left and all of the humans all of the men rely on you yeah and so i think it's selfish and then also i really love that part where the elf lady uh, she showed Frodo the a future that would happen and unfold if he refused to, you know, mm -hmm. go through with 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 what he has to do with his mission. 
And that, again, is another thing about the hero's journey is that having the courage to face your demon head on and to deliberately and willingly sacrifice yourself, sacrifice your sanity, you know, your blood, sweat and tears for the greater good will cause the, the demise of the world, essentially. And I think that that sounds very hardcore and just very radical. But I think everybody watching this and everybody who's seen this movie, they'll have moments in their lives where that is the case. Mm -hmm. It's where just, you know, avoiding responsibility always leads to, you know, bad judgment. And that leads to a poor reality and just everything kind of gets flipped on its head. Yeah. So the power, you know, corrupting anyone who wears it. Um, At the beginning, we saw the... The first king who defeated Sauron, he put the ring on, and I just had written down that uh, the abused becomes the abuser, and usually that's what we see in our society. Even today, it's like the the marginalized groups, usually when they take control of power, they abuse the power and they marginalize those who had marginalized them. And so humans are very resentful uh, and Spiteful. spiteful. Yeah. I'm just checking the time. But um <laughs> so do you want me to just like race through this real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Because I didn't even like write too many notes. A lot of these yeah, notes are me just neither. me writing the names of the people. Um Mount Doom equals Sauron, Eye of Sauron. I find it interesting how it's an eye, you know, like it's the eye of God, but then this is the opposite of God. This is the eye of like Satan, if you will, like in traditional religions, it's like the pure embodiment of evil. And evil never rests. Evil is always always at bay and it's always our like our responsibility to keep it at bay and so it's a daily fight we have to be like daily warriors to really fend off evil because if you do nothing in that nothingness you'll be hunted and you'll be devoured by by the orcs by the you know uh people cycle of power the abuse becomes the abuser uh elves man dwarves i just wrote down like all of the people frodo names uh oh black speech and elvish i'm curious and if you guys could respond um to this question and just like clarify for us is elvish a real language and i feel kind of foolish asking that but maybe it's like an ancient medieval language or even more ancient than that but did they create a language out of thin air and if so like is it an act like is it an operating language like can you <laughs> like can you speak elvish i know that that's like um well i've heard like in the in the show game of thrones which i've never watched but there is like oh like there's like a language in that too that's like completely fictional though mm. so it maybe it's like the same thing who knows yeah um there's four uh i had written four hobbits no that's not important um hold on guys oh this one's interesting too so going off of metaphors again um the king lineage to me uh represents just generational trauma so when aragorn was um saying that he didn't want to take on the role of king because of his ancestors and he doesn't want to kind of um face the same fate and he doesn't want to be corrupted by power i think that that a lot of what that represents is just generational trauma because gandalf told him that you have to be the one that stops it Mm -hmm. like you have to be the one that changes everything it's like that's usually what um modern psychologists refer to as the black sheep of the family and i personally identify as the black sheep of my family because i don't really connect and feel like i connect with most of the people in my own family and so I feel like I'm the one that has to bear that responsibility of just, you know, uh, breaking those generational curses and those generational, you know, just um, burdens, I guess. So I really related to that with the idea of the of the generational trauma. Sacrifice, immortality for love. I love that idea, too. It's, uh, the elf lady was willing to sacrifice her immortality for love. Mm-hmm. And that's very cool and very profound because love in many ways is immortal you know if you love someone then it transcends the boundaries of space and time and that's what i believe is that love is one of the few things that can 
you know, just go like go way beyond. Overcome all, yeah. And that's why people who are like mediums and people who speak to spirits and stuff, they're able to cross those barriers. And you have to think too, like what what good is it to live a an immortal like everlasting life if it's not one of love? You yeah. Know? So then that it's like that's the exchange. It's like uh, yeah. she'd rather have a short life or or a normal span of life but but with the love of her life you yes, know she would have to like she would rather have a short full life yeah than a long empty life yeah exactly yeah uh all right i'm almost done with my notes fellowship of the ring is nine members like i like this idea of polarity and just game of opposites so we have nine of those um half like n- nor dead nor alive grim reaper type of beings and then you have nine members of the Fellowship of the Ring. And they chose that specific number for a reason. I think that it's like for you to combat evil, like you have to do it at an equal scale. Uh, uh, like otherwise it's just not, it's just not going to result in anything. Yeah. And then the same I can say about Frodo being the one that has to bear the responsibility of destroying the ring. Because Frodo, among all of them, is the purest and so you need the purest soul to deal with the most corrupt thing, with the most evil thing. And so that's the only way that you level the playing field. It's like it has to be Frodo because he's the purest of heart. He's pure joy. He's the embodiment of love and naivete and innocence. And so he has to destroy this thing that is the emblem and the embodiment of corruption yeah and even with like all of that power in his grasp like he doesn't abuse or misuse it and that's like the whole key it's like you see that even someone like gandalf who gives the impression that he is you know Mm. of good and good intent it's like he understands that you know there there are like even the slightest inkling to abuse power can Mm -hmm. kind of mislead you to do that and so frodo doesn't have that at all like he doesn't have any intent to um even harness this power so that already kind of you know makes sense for him to be the one to just carry it yeah oh that's it oh (laughs) okay um to what you said i think that it's because um gandalf understands that when you witness evil and you've been in the presence of pure evil then in a weird way even if subconsciously and directly you assimilate the capacity or you at least assimilate the path that could lead you to the same fate so if you uh face an enemy that's like pure evil like demons just like gandalf probably faced in his long life faced various demons monsters just the worst of the worst And so he sees evil and he sees the capacity, like he sees what evil is capable of doing, what it's capable of being. And so Frodo, again, he's a pure soul. He's lived in um, the Shire all his life. He was born there. He would dream of adventures. He would read his uncle's books, his novels, his stories, but he never saw or witnessed evil. And we don't even know if he ever heard of evil. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's again, it's that it's, it's just getting someone who's just the purest and then exposing them and, and giving them that task to dispose of the most evil and vile things. And there's something I wanted to point out there too, because their town seemed so perfect. Right. And they said it, it's like, and we saw it, it was all like, all they thought about was like eating and drinking ale or beer and and smoking the pipes smoking and the weed the, they said yeah, the they weed. literally said smoking the weed <laughs> um <laughs> and 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 just like having parties and just like you know relax and that's it yeah and oh peace and quiet they said but they mm. they did know how to turn up for the birthday yeah. so <laughs> that's why i said people. that but yeah but my point is that um it's interesting that we see that because seeing the contrast of that which is that you know um those like shadow figures i forget what they were called shadow wreaths or whatever they were called um wreaths i think yeah but but they go there and they kind of probably wreaked havoc like we didn't even see Mm -hmm. what might have happened in the shire and so, but we do see the future potential of what could have happened in the Shire yeah. if Frodo doesn't 
like do this task and my point is that um have like being too sheltered like mm. trying to keep yourself too protected and then they said that too it's like oh like we don't we don't bother ourselves with like things on the outside you know like yeah. we're just in our own little bubble but at some point that bubble is going to pop mm. because at some point you know all it takes is one thing or one instance where you know mm. people kind of like interfere with the your way of living and your your bubble essentially mm. and so yeah. my point is that like you can't keep yourself sheltered and so e people who live in in that fear or people who live um ignorantly even so whichever side that it like you're on it's like at some point you just have to face reality mm. and the reality of just things not always being picture perfect and not always being rainbows and butterflies and sunshine that's corny as that sounds but that's how people say it no but i agree 100 percent. and i think that to your point too it's this idea that you shouldn't kill but you should be capable of killing if you have to then you should be able to it's like that's the whole idea of integrating your shadow self like that's the whole concept is that we all have an inner monster and we have to every day find ways to balance it out with our inner angel, if you will. So it's the angel and devil on your shoulder. It's the yin and yang. It's chaos and order. You know, it's you have to keep like a, a constant feng shui, if you will, like a constant mm. ba uh, balance. Um, I like how Smeagol before the ring and Gollum after the ring. That just shows again that the ring is corrupting, you know, like it corrupts everyone. Yeah, it literally everything. changes your identity. Yeah. Um, look into the mirror. I really love that part because not too many people nowadays, especially nowadays too, like as simple as it sounds, not too many people look themselves in the mirror, like actually look. A lot of people see themselves in the mirror, but they don't really look because to look is to search. And to search is to realize one's own vulnerability, one's own mortality, one's own flaws, inadequacies, strengths. And not too many people do that every day. Like how many of you guys watching, for example, look yourself in the mirror every morning when you're going to brush your teeth, wash your mouth, wash your face, and you stare yourself down and you make a list, like a conscious list of everything that is good and everything that is bad. It's like we don't do that like almost rarely does anybody do that mm. and so i think that that's the power of looking yourself into the mirror or or looking into the mirror and and looking at yourself and so that's why she she said that she said look into the mirror mm -hmm. like you you never know what one will find and so these like very uh very ambiguous phrases i guess i guess ambiguous is the and, and the mirror kind of revealed like what his biggest fear would be mm. for him personally so it's like the inner turmoil of like what would happen if i don't do this thing yeah and so that's why it, sh it focused on his best friend like it, it focused on sam being like a prisoner and you know kind of being led to wherever and his hometown like it showed the shire specifically being set up in flames because it could have shown any other part of the world that they're in you know being destroyed but it but it showed what he fears the most and so yeah. that's what the mirror is it's like the inner reflection and so it wasn't her projecting anything for him to see it was what he he was already seeing something that was within him yeah yeah and to quote bob marley because i was listening listening to bob marley earlier uh, he says that we have to emancipate ourselves from mental slavery and that none but ourselves can free ourselves, essentially. You know, like it's that idea that that you will never. And it's interesting, too, because he asked Gandalf a few times for his opinion, for answers. And Gandalf rarely gave him a straight answer. And that's why I even made a comment throughout the film. I said that he never gives a straight answer. And that's on purpose, too, because you're not supposed to. Like, no one is supposed to have all of the answers for this game of life that we all play and share. It's like, nobody's supposed to answer it for you. It's like cheating on a test. You know, like, that's why we, like, prepare and study for tests. And that's why we do our our own tests individually. It's because of that. And so, I think that, um, I forgot what I was going to say. But I think that that's essentially it. I don't know, I forgot. But... <laughs> But yeah, do you have anything else? Um, you have you're done with your. You're done with your list. Where? 
like right on the tip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I'm done with my list. You are? Yeah. Oh, I didn't see you cross everything out. Um, let me think what I have. Um, oh, I wrote the same thing that you said about Frodo having like an innocence in his eyes, and that's a reflection of the purity of his soul. Um, I put. Uh, his friends were not thinking before getting into trouble like they <laughs> just were so but again I think that that's supposed to emphasize like these are just children essentially so they didn't yeah. have any any like they couldn't grasp the concept or the severity especially at first like in the beginning phases when they were all just alone mm -hmm. at first the four of them but they would just start cause trouble and light fires so that they would be seen and then do all of these things and touch things yeah that and they're touch not things to. that they're not supposed to yeah and then like literally like they were in part a uh, cause for people dying at points like Gandalf at least it's like they you know summon that thing with the noise and the well I I can't really say that but I don't know it's just a but that's an interesting point because I didn't even think about it that way. And it makes a lot of sense, too. It's like the Fellowship of the Ring, their mission is not to destroy the ring, but rather also, maybe, perhaps, to protect the childlike nature of humanity. And then the, the uh, hobbits represent the childlike essence of every man, every woman, of every being on this earth it's like it's the most pure part of being you know and that's why they go to the lengths that they go to in order to protect it in order to save it and so this is a movie more so about protecting that childlike nature yeah you know because the first way to look at it is what i said earlier it's the hero's journey it's like a t it's like a typical hero's journey but then it, when you start breaking it down even more you start understanding that these are just ignorant children who are blind to the malevolence that prevails in this earth in this life in this world you know there's mm. a lot of good and there's a lot of evil and if you don't protect your kids as a parent from these evils by by preparing them not nerfing them just like you said but by preparing them then y they're gonna be a lost cause like they're gonna you know they're they're not gonna make it I'm not sure if I'm right about this, but I noticed that like certain characters had blue eyes, but not all characters. Mm. Um, and also blue was showing a lot. So we saw the blue light in the mines or the tomb or whatever they called it. True. Um, we saw uh, blue eyes. I wrote down the the sword turning, like having a blue light emanating from it whenever it detected orcs around um and so my point was that what was my point with that oh well for the eyes at least if you see the villains in the movie mm -hmm. i think almost all of the villains or if not all of them have like yellow or red or or just dark eyes and mm -hmm. so i think that that's why frodo's eyes were just so saturated too it's like they're like there's something about the blue and maybe we don't know the whole thing about it yet. Yeah. Um, but I just know that it's obviously supposed to resemble like the purity. And then that's why there's waterfalls in these people's like uh, in the elves kind of homes and whatever, you know, it's mm -hmm. like something about the water too, how they can manipulate the water and stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't know, but it's just something that I pointed out. Mm -hmm. And, and my, my last comment would be that um, this is more so a comment from my, from my inner child, I guess. And I'm just going to let him speak real quick. But like, it would be cool if all of this actually existed at one point. Because even as like a conspiracy theorist, because we have a podcast where we talk about multiple conspiracy theories. I've heard conspiracy theories about people alleging that um, giants once existed, the Nephilim, giants, uh, cyclops, mermaids, Loch Ness monsters, yeah. all of these like mythological creatures that are just, you know, uh, Bigfoot. 
Yeah, Bigfoot, Sasquatch. <laughs> like, these are all just uh, topics of tales, you know? It's just myths and legends. But what if they actually have some substantial truth and backing to it? Like, it would be interesting. Like, we don't, like, we know what science tells us, and I'm not a science denier. You know, like, science tells us that there were dinosaurs and that there was this and this. But what if there was something even, like, wilder back then you know yeah. like what if magic existed what if That's there what were I was wizards say. what if there were witches what if there were dwarves and and you know like who knows it would make the world seem more magical for sure yeah and maybe now what we're living is just a world that lacks that magic because we've decided to pursue knowledge instead of pursuing wisdom hmm. you know like i feel like there's a choice to be had for every for every society or every, you know, generation of humans is that you can either choose to venture down the road of wisdom or knowledge. And I think that wisdom is what all of these characters had. And they have this deep connection with nature, which is why they're always walking barefoot. Yeah. You know, like they, they sense that the orcs are coming. They can feel it. It's like you become one with the world. You become one with the, with the divine. You become one with the animating principle and the music the divine music that animates all things and that is embedded in all things, which is what we can call God or what I call God. And so you see that a lot. And I think that that's all it is. It's just that maybe back then we were more focused on wisdom and we just, in terms of this material existence, in terms of survival, we just covered the basics like housing and just make sure that we have enough food for everybody, but keep it relatively simple and then focus more on the spiritual aspects of it, which I really like seeing in this movie. A lot of it is a metaphor for spirituality, just like the elves are metaphors for, you know, guardians or spiritual guides or spirit guides. And yeah. And I was going to say that too, like the contrast is the, is the orcs and the evil beings where they were like chopping down the trees mm -hmm. you know that that they said the roots were running deep even and so it's like the destruction of nature and yeah. so that that kind of shows too it's like and that exists in today's reality that's a great point and i think that the orcs represent humans nowadays yeah the the orcs in my opinion are the modern humans we are zombies we are just beasts we are animals we are ruthless we do anything for power we'll do anything to find the ring of power to defend the ring of power we'll do anything for clout for for money chasing for you know power in general and i think that that's a good point is that we've destroyed nature we're destroying mother earth we're you know, just completely ignoring things that back then we couldn't even imagine living without. You know? Yeah, I was going to point out, too, that it's interesting that the the town or whatever, I don't even know what to call it, like town or I don't know. But mm -hmm. the the city, I guess, of Mordor kind of sounds like murder. Mm, you know, it's Mordor. like the it's yeah. like where where the murderers are coming from, kind of. Yeah. Um. I don't have much else. Just give me one second. Uh, oh, when he, when they when Gandalf, I don't know who pointed it out actually, said that a wound never f a wound never fully heals. You you, you that Frodo was going to carry it for the rest of his life. Right, the it's wound like a that, scar. Right, and so I thought that that was interesting because that can also be applied to a real world. It's like we. We have wounds, we have trauma, and those things can never be fully he fully healed, and you kind of just carry it for the rest of your life, yeah. even if you make it, peace with it or ex <coughs> or find your way to accepting it. Yeah. And um, yeah, I thought that that was interesting for sure. And I also think that a lot of people they make the mistake of allowing their scars to define them. Yeah. And that comes with not making peace with it like you said like as long as you acknowledge things and you make peace with it then you can move forward even if you have it attached to your body for all eternity you know like it doesn't matter yeah but i think that a lot of people allow their scars to define them and that's the big mistake um sorry my last things are um uh, when when gandalf said fly you fools i still want to try to make sense of that but I think that it just meant like um, scram. 
Yeah, but but I thought more so, you know, it's just like just like a bird. It's like go be free. It's yeah. like fly. It's like don't don't be grounded in what's happening with me. It's like kind of just alleviate yourself. Yeah, and maybe the fact that he's a wizard also implies or is trying to communicate this idea that the material world is all but just an illusion, you know, because the universe is mental. That's a hermetic principle uh, passed down by uh, Hermes Thresmagestus. He was like one of the ancients of just knowledge and stuff. But not to get to like too deep into that, but then that part where he almost dies himself while fighting Saruman, he flies away on his hawk. Mm. So a hawk appears and then, you know, carries him. Yeah. And so I think that that's also maybe alluding to the fact that maybe Gandalf is dead. Maybe he's not because we hear him communicating with Frodo. So maybe in the next movies he makes an appearance. Like, who knows? But he said, fly, you fools, as if it's like, just just ju- just keep going. Just, mm-hmm. just fly. It's like, just decide to fly and you will fly. And I think that there's like a very profound spiritual lesson there, but I can't really get into it right now because we don't have like an hour. Imagine two hours. he didn't die. Yeah. That would be that would yeah. be great. Um, or maybe at least he's dead mortally, but he's still alive, like in spirit. You know. The last thing I have is someone said, "Don't carry the weight of the dead." I think that was also said to Frodo, and I think it was said by Aragorn mm-hmm. or Aragorn. Um. Oh, do you have to cha- pause it? Oh, mm, there's still five minutes left. Oh, but um, yeah, I thought that that was powerful too. It's like don't carry the weight. So it's like he was even rushing them to kind of like finish their grieving moment because you know there's an urgency. Mm-hmm. So you kind of just have to move on. It's like you can't dwell right. in it because that'll that'll keep you restrained and keep you kind of constrained to that and then you don't you don't um go after anything else essentially sorry i literally can't talk yeah, today because, because it's late too. yeah um, i'm like so beat but i get what you're saying like you can't really move on with any levity if you're holding on to mortal baggage right you know and they teach that a lot in like when you meditate for example um in order for you to unlock all of your energy pathways all of your chakras like you have to let go of certain things and one of those things is that you have to let go of just material like material connections with things and people and death is one of them yeah for sure because it'll block up and close up your um chakra your heart chakra um but yeah anything else i'm excited to watch the second one i'm excited to watch it unravel i'm excited it's like i do really enjoy frodo's character i like i enjoy like the just like the innocence of it and i'm sure that as the movies goes go on it gets better like this was just like an introduction yeah it's kind a of up. right it's like world building so it's like more slow yeah. paced yeah no but but it felt like it was really good yeah. like um it's just like i'm like i'm actually surprised like it's not at all what i was like anticipating like nothing that i could have imagined so Mm. like that's actually a pleasant thing yeah um but that's it all right (laughs) um so i'm also excited to check it out uh check out the full trilogy we will be finishing again uh trilogies that we have to close out so we'll be doing the godfather part two three we'll do the Dark Knight Rises very soon, and we're just gonna like do everything. It's just like just o- yeah, o- like we're gonna time. tie up the loose ends pretty yeah. soon because there's a lot of movies for us to experience, and this is a long term journey with you guys. And we appreciate you guys tagging along. And the best way to support us as creators is to just drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it, if you found any value, uh, if you liked hanging out with us. Uh, share it with a friend who enjoys movies, Lord of the Rings fans, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Um, uh, turn on your notification bell so you never miss a new episode. And as always, don't forget that it's never wrong to be mentally gone. Peace, Peace to, to the, the world. world. Fly, you fools. Fly, you fools. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>